Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I will be discussing the South Korean science fiction film Space Sweepers. Spoiler ahead. Watch out and take care. In the year 2092, we are introduced to a desolate Earth that has become uninhabitable due to global warming. The human race is struggling to survive, facing the imminent threat of extinction. To address this crisis, the UTS Corporation constructs a biodome space station designed to sustain a select group of people. This space station mimics the once thriving ecosystem of Earth, fostering abundant life within its confines. James Sullivan, the brilliant CEO of UTS and the mastermind behind the space station, catches our attention. Despite appearing middle-aged, he defies age with an astonishing 150 years of existence. Soon, a team of reporters arrives from Earth to interview Sullivan, focusing on the topic of Mars colonization. During the interview, Sullivan explains upon the utilization of groundbreaking technologies. In the upcoming announcement, UTS Corporation reveals their remarkable achievement of transforming Mars into a habitable and verdant planet. However, during the interview, one daring reporter questions James Sullivan about the unjust nature of the space station, which caters exclusively to the wealthy and privileged while the majority of Earth's population is left to endure the inhospitable conditions on the planet. Sullivan, in response, attributes the current state of Earth to human negligence and reassures that everything is under control. In the following scene, we witness the Earth's orbit teeming with debris, which is diligently cleared by a group of non-citizen workers known as space sweepers. These crews, led by Captain Jang, undertake the task of collecting and depositing the space debris at a location called the factory. Among Captain Jang's crew are Taeho, Tiger Park, and Bubs, an android. Taeho finds himself in urgent need of a significant amount of money for personal reasons, while Tiger, their skilled mechanic, had a notorious past as a drug baron on Earth. Bubs, once a soldier, now assists in repairing the ship and collecting space debris, while also saving money for a complete skin graft procedure. Despite their individual motivations, what keeps them united is the common need to earn money. However, their financial situation is dire, and their ship, named Victory, is at risk of being seized by the bank. During routine repairs one day, Taeho, Tiger, and Bubs discover movement inside one of the ship's containers. To their surprise, they find a young girl named Dorothy hiding among the cargo. Although she appears innocent, they soon realize that Dorothy is not what she seems. The crew later watches footage of an android explosion that occurred in a city, resulting in the tragic deaths of numerous people, highlighting the potential danger associated with Dorothy's true nature. A robot girl was sent by the terrorist group Black Fox. The ship crew witnessed this in horror, realizing that the child they had taken in was actually a walking bomb. They anxiously dropped to the floor, expecting an explosion, but Dorothy surprised them by sneezing instead and joining in the laughter. Panic-stricken, Tiger called the police while Tejo searched through the robot's backpack and discovered a phone, along with other items. Among the call log, Tejo found multiple calls from someone named Kang Hyun Yu. Meanwhile, Dorothy displayed her extraordinary abilities by reviving a dead plant on the ship. Tejo devised a plan, he suggested using the phone to contact Black Fox, assuming they were searching for their weapon, and make a deal with them. This would allow them to earn a substantial amount of money in one go. The group proceeds to make the call to Kang who agrees to pay them $2 million in exchange for returning Dorothy. Kang instructs them to bring the girl to a nightclub. Unbeknownst to them, the call is intercepted by Sullivan. Before the crew can head to the club, a police officer arrives, likely due to Tiger's earlier call. However, the officer is not on duty and seems to be there to hassle them. Zhang takes charge and handles the situation, successfully getting rid of the officer. The crew takes Dorothy to the nightclub, where Sullivan's team, led by Camilla, is waiting for them. Camilla's team has orders to kill Dorothy's kidnappers. Meanwhile, Taeho and Tiger meet with Kang, who hands over the money. In the midst of the deal, Dorothy manages to slip out of the bag she was kept in and wanders off into the club. This causes a commotion as people recognize Dorothy from the news and start to distance themselves. Taeho and Tiger locate Dorothy just as Camilla's team opens fire on them. Soldier 1 starts shooting, but to their surprise, Dorothy's eyes change color, and a protective force field shields Taeho and Tiger from the blast. Jang, Observing through a feed on the ship, notices the man who arrived to collect something. Dorothy affectionately calls her cot, Nim. The scene then shifts to UTS headquarters, where Sullivan expresses his dissatisfaction with the events unfolding at the nightclub. Meanwhile, a meeting is taking place, revealing the revolutionary technology behind transforming inhospitable planets like Mars into lush, green environments. This technology is known as nanobots, which enhance plant growth and enable them to thrive in any soil, atmosphere, and adverse conditions. These plants can rapidly grow within a few days, without requiring sunlight or oxygen. It represents a significant technological advancement. In the midst of the meeting, Sullivan's attention is caught by a pair of rune goggles. Suddenly, 
he loses control of his emotions, and his fury manifests physically. Dark veins bulge against his skin, transforming him into a monstrous figure. After returning to the ship, Dorothy reveals her Korean name, Kotnim. Taeho pays no attention, while Tiger grows fond of her and suggests keeping her. Taeho dismisses the idea and focuses on arranging another call with Kang to reschedule the exchange. Jang discovers papers in Dorothy's backpack and examines them. Bubs applies makeup to Dorothy while sharing the story of Taeho's past as a child soldier. Taeho attacked and boarded a ship where he killed fleeing non-citizens. He found a baby girl alive in the arms of a deceased woman and adopted her, caring for her by providing food, baths, and nurturing. Unfortunately, test results showed that the girl's ear canal had been damaged due to the loud noise during that incident. Taeho, burdened by guilt, realizes that the events leading to Dorothy's damaged ear canal were a consequence of his actions. Overwhelmed by guilt, he finds himself unable to bring harm to anyone else. Consequently, he is fired from UTS, left homeless, and forced to live a miserable life as a non-citizen. After a year of homelessness, Taeho becomes desperate and turns to gambling, neglecting his responsibilities towards Sun Yi, his companion. Tragically, one day, while Sun Yi was scavenging for food amidst debris from a space collapse, she was caught in a blast and propelled into space. Taeho is devastated by the loss. In his attempt to locate Sun Yi by recruiting a recovery team through the space lost and found, he realizes he cannot afford the steep price required. He has a mere three years to gather enough money, otherwise, Sun Yi will drift away from Earth's orbit and be forever lost in space. Meanwhile, Dorothy discovers that Bubs is, in fact, a female, but due to her voice, she is mistaken for a male. Kane contacts the crew, requesting a meeting in two hours. Tiger, who has grown attached to Dorothy, is unhappy with the idea of giving her up, fearing what Black Fox might do to her. However, Taeho prioritizes the acquisition of money and the search for his daughter, who has limited time left before she drifts away from Earth's orbit. Meanwhile, Sullivan engages in a conversation with the reporter who had previously confronted him about the use of Earth's resources for the space station. Sullivan reveals that when he was six years old, his parents were killed by terrorists. Since then, he had made a personal vow to create a better world. He expresses his indifference towards Earth's resources and the people who are suffering. Sullivan proceeds to kill the reporter, and in the subsequent scene, Kotnim is pursued by a man named Karam while she goes to the restroom. Karam captures her but her screams alert Taeho and Tiger, who come to her rescue. After a fierce fight, the crew confronts Karam and his group. They reveal the shocking truth. Kotnim is not a robot but a human girl who was born with a congenital disease, rendering her unable to speak or walk. In a desperate attempt to save her life, Dr. Kang, her father, injected her with nanobots. These nanobots not only saved her life and healed most of her conditions but also granted her a secret ability to communicate with other nanobots. This ability explains how she revived the tomato plant on the ship Victory. However, Sullivan, upon discovering Kotnim and her abilities, exploited her to make Mars habitable instead of prioritizing improvements to Earth's atmosphere. In a surprising twist, it is revealed that Black Fox is not a terrorist organization but rather a group of environmental activists who spoke out against Sullivan's actions. Sullivan, however, branded them as terrorists and sought to eliminate them. The members of Black Fox inform Captain Jang's group that Sullivan has no regard for humanity. After the successful launch of his Mars project, his plan is to destroy Earth along with Kotnim. The girl is protected by nanobots that can only be destroyed at a temperature of 200 million degrees Celsius. To carry out his plan, Sullivan has prepared a core in his factory, a gravity engine where he intends to store a hydrogen bomb. He will then take Kotnim to this location and detonate the bomb resulting in the destruction of not only the place, the girl, and the nanobots, but also causing the factory to crash into Earth, potentially killing up to 3 million people. The place is suddenly attacked by Sullivan's space guards, who are in pursuit of Kotnim and the Black Fox. The crew quickly escapes with the assistance of nanobots. Kang contacts them and requests a meeting, prompting the crew to plan to reunite Kotnim with her father and disable the bomb with the help of the Black Fox, who will locate and bring Dr. Kang to the designated meeting point. While facing a soldier attack, Taeho and Kotnim manage to flee aboard the Victory. They navigate through a field of space debris, where the nanobots intervene, and Kotnim communicates with them, causing the nanobots to disperse. They reach the factory where the meetup is scheduled. Just as Kang embraces his daughter, Sullivan arrives and his robots ruthlessly kill everyone. The Black Fox members and Kang are captured by Sullivan, who also captures Captain Jang's crew. They are subjected to a beating. However, it is revealed that Zhang had a micro-bomb concealed in her teeth, which she activates. Unfortunately, Sullivan was aware of this and removes the bomb, deactivating it. It is also uncovered that Jang used to work for Sullivan, having been one of the child prodigies supported by UTS. 
Jang created advanced inventions for the company but turned against Sullivan upon discovering his true intentions. In her attempt to assassinate Sullivan, Jang's crew was killed, while Sullivan survived. Jang then assumed a new identity with an eye transplant. Sullivan turns his attention to Teho and makes a tempting offer of $2 million in exchange for abandoning Cottonham. Although Teho is unwilling to forsake the innocent girl, he ultimately succumbs to the offer because he finally achieves what he has been yearning for in the past three years, money to find his own daughter. Teho reluctantly gives up Cottonham and accepts the money, while the rest of the crew refuses to touch it, determined to rescue her. Teho heads to the lost and found, where he surrenders the money. As he rummages through a box, he discovers various belongings of his own daughter, including drawings, toys, and a small book. Opening the book, he reads about Sun Yi's aspirations to become a good person like her father and breaks down in tears, overwhelmed by grief for his lost daughter and guilt for abandoning another girl who could have been saved from a psychopath. Teho returns to the victory after taking money, where he apologizes to Jang and Tiger, and together they prepare to embark on a mission to rescue Kotnam. Along the way, they encounter drone attacks but manage to fend them off and survive unscathed. The crew arrives at the factory and meets Kotnam, while Jang starts working on defusing the hydrogen bomb. However, she delivers the unfortunate news that the bomb cannot be defused. If it detonates, the krypton waves it emits will have a radius of around 5,000 kilometers, killing the nanobots inside Cottonham and causing her to return to her previous critical condition. Moreover, Earth will be affected by the explosion. The crew decides to fly 5,000 kilometers away from the factory to minimize the impact. However, their plan is disrupted by Soldier 1. Tiger engages in a fight with her and successfully ejects her from the factory. The team sends a distress message to the other space sweepers, who come to their help and engage in battle against the attacking troops. As the battle rages on, the shocking truth about Sullivan's true intentions is revealed, leaving the population of Earth and UTS colonies astounded. In the climactic moment, the crew hears a recording of Sullivan revealing his sinister plan. Suddenly, Sullivan himself intercepts the victory and engages in a fierce battle with the crew to reclaim Cottonham. Just when it appears that they have lost the fight, Tiger and Teho manage a final boost that propels the ship out of the blast range. The crew then reveals that Cottonham was safely left behind with other space sweepers. The victory had removed the bomb from the core and carried it away, ready to sacrifice their lives to save Earth and Cottonham. As the bomb explodes, Cottonham summons the nanobots to protect the victory, saving the lives of the crew. With Sullivan defeated, UTS publicly apologizes for the cover-up and pledges to help make Earth more habitable. Cottonham is adopted by the crew, and using her powers, she enables Teho to say a heartfelt goodbye to his daughter, Sun Yi. Bubs receives a skin graft, and Tiger and Teho take Cottonham down to Earth to aid in reforesting efforts. The crew continues their space sweeping missions, and the movie concludes. Thank you for watching our recap. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button and feel free to explore our other recaps.